Hi everybody, welcome to part three of the video series that unpacks how the unit site works. Uh, you would have already watched video part one and two which covered this section of the navigation and structure of the unit site which was announcements, how to use the site, the unit plan, teaching team about the unit. Actually I make a correction, I've just actually added this site, this section here, this is new and it's where all the videos will be kept, which includes this one. I thought that was a nice place to put it, so it's right up at the front, and you can watch this before you actually enter the site into more detail. In video um, two, part two, I looked at workshop one and pre-departure. In, in this particular video, I want to concentrate on the in-country area, and as an example of a group of students that are going to China, and in future, uh, I will also have extra tabs here depending on your destination. So for example, if you were going to India, there'd be another tab under here and it would have India, and that's where you would get your um, country specific information. And I will talk about that more using the China Future Leaders Program as an example. So in country is a resource that I recommend you um, investigate and review prior to going to in-country because as we know some countries we visit will fi we'll find it difficult to have internet access um, and that would be complicated for you if you're in a country and you can't access the Blackboard unit site so I recommend that you review this prior to um, boarding your plane and leaving Australia to your overseas destination However, it's entirely up to you. You might want to, you, you might have um, worked out how you're going to use the internet while you're in your in country, and that's also fine. So basically, I have created this part of um, the unit site specifically around your experience while you will be in country. Again, I've set it up um, so we have the headings of the topics and introduction, students' views of their in country experiences. I've also linked again the surveys regarding the self-awareness learning activities. Um, and in this section, which is uh, probably the highlight of this area, is the reflective practice model using the five R's. There's also reference to the industry study tour WordPress blog and how you can get involved. And because assessment two is related to the in-country assessment, I have a link to that and I'll explain that in a bit in a in more detail further up, further along and then I also have additional resources. So again don't forget to scroll always to the bottom because I would hate for you to miss out on you know important learning resources and information. Now here we have an intro the introduction and as the site gets further developed it will have an introduction to the different destinations that students will be heading towards. So at the moment I have India and um, top Indian stories, stories regarding the news and um, Samoa as well as examples of future destinations that students will, will be going to. So this site will be constantly evolving and getting bigger and bigger depending on all the different destinations that we go to. Um, so as you go down there's also you can click onto this at a later date, but there's also student views of the in-country experiences. And again, I've linked it back. So when you click here, you will go back to the surveys, um, which you will need to have done before pre-departure. But just remember that some of these surveys need to actually occur while you're in country. And that's why I've linked that. And that's why I've linked that here. And the learning context is still under development and as you can see this unit is currently always being developed and we will be adding resources all the time. So don't be um, alarmed if you find that things are missing or need to be developed, there's normally a reason for that. Either students haven't gone to certain destinations and we're waiting for information in that area. I really want to highlight a couple of areas here, um, especially as this is the in-country module part of the unit. This particular area is very important because it's aligned to your assessment and you will need to um, take the time to look at the model that I've presented here for you. What I've done is I've created a Prezi 
um, that goes into great detail and you can start the Prezi within the Blackboard unit site. It talks about reflective practice in three main stages and I have the three main stages um, elaborated further upon throughout here. And it explains what I'll be looking for when it comes to your reflective practice assessment or the lecturer who will be marking your assessment. Um, it's not always going to be me, um, so just keep in mind that we have different people marking as well. And again, um, I've also linked the assessment of particular for this, this section of the unit site, which is about assessment to reflective practice while you're in country, um, I've placed here. Another area that's really important is the units blog. We've set this up specifically for you. Um, you can become a writer. You can do this in prior to going to your country destination. You can do it while you're in country. You can also do it when you come back. And we're interested in finding out about your stories um, so that these stories can be published for a wider audience. That can also help you with your reflective practice summary that you'll need to do as part of assessment two as well as um, assessment three. So here's the link to the Industry Study Tours blog. And as you can see, um, someone's already started to write stories, which is great. We have um, destination countries and you can click on here and find out further information such as travel tips, health, law, and it goes into great detail. If you would like to become a writer for, for this blog, your stories will be published here and also the teachers of this unit, their stories will be published as well. And again, I've linked the assessment to reflective practice in this part of the unit site and I've also provided additional reflective practice resources for you. To help you um, unpack what reflective practice is, I've also given a basic introduction to that, a short guide on how to reflect effectively, some extra reflective writing resources and some reflective writing exercises to, to encourage you and support you as you start to think about your weekly reflections while in country. Now just remember for assessment two, I'm not actually looking for your weekly reflections as submissions, but a summary of those weekly reflections. So that's why it's so important that you regularly reflect while you're in country. It'll help you with assessment two and also will um, influence how you do assessment three. So the next area I want to look at is for, as an example, uh, we have a group of students going to China and we've given them a separate area and so this is where you'll find information that is specific for your particular cohort here. So as you can see it's really important to be looking at the whole unit and the whole and the whole and in the way in which it's structured because there's resources throughout um, but also be aware that you also have your own area. So we've got um, discussion post area where you can actually discuss to your fellow peers and receive answers and the lecturers get involved in that area as well. We have top news stories and there's background videos uh, which are about language and culture and there's also academic resources ar ar around China. And we've also unpacked um, your assessment criteria here in detail and the, and the due dates for your particular cohort. And also to help you bridge the gap between the assessments that we're asking you to do depending on your discipline specific lens that you'll be looking through and also your destination. So every student cohort is different. Some students are very project orientated when they go to their country. Other students won't be. It really depends on the experience. So what we've done here is we've given um, some advice to help you make sure you know what you're doing with your assessments. And here you'll find, like I mentioned before in part one video, your specific agenda for your particular cohort when it comes to workshop one. And this is where you would go for workshop two, two as agenda when you come back from your in-country experience. I've also put important pre-learning expectations, which I've covered in um, video one and two, that you need to actively engage with the pre-departure module, which is what I've explained as part of this unit site. You need to review the five R's model and you also need to consider getting involved in the industry study tours blog and do and complete the relevant surveys, which I've also linked here. And then 
once we organize workshop two, you'll find the information will be linked here as well. Okay, so that's it for this part of video three. And as we develop further this unit, I will create more videos. Um, so for example, there will need to be a, a re-entry and a workshop two video. Um, and we've also got other resources here that you'll need to take the time to look at. The assessments are all in one area, so it's easy for you. And so they've broken them down into workshop one, you've got workshop two here, and then you have your three main assessments. They're all graded and they've all got templates that you can work from, rubrics that you need to look at and how to submit the process for that. Uh, we have video resource information to help you with assessment three and, and how to actually do that because you will be needing to create a video. And we also have our discussion forums. Um, and as we can see, it's quite active here for a particular cohort that are going to China soon. And as more students come into the site, they will have their own discussion area. We have the risk management, which is what I said is a, a very important hurdle that requirement for you to complete prior to you boarding the plane. And I've put that in its own area under risk management. There's learning tools, there's Blackboard help for you if you have any trouble. And then lastly, we have an actual reading list, which is aligned to all the assessments. And will help you with the assessments, but also help you with the, the learning activities throughout the Blackboard site as well. And I've put them in alphabetical order as well as author. So easy to navigate and know exactly what you're reading and why. Okay, so that's it from me at the moment. And I hope to add to the collection of videos to help you with the unit site. And I would be very happy to receive any feedback and I'll keep developing and improving as we go. Thank you very much.